this is radhika i am going to discuss about uh, switch gear and protection video lecture under this we are going to discuss about the protection of transmission lines and faders today we are going to discuss about the uh, pilot wires and their effects so in this before to going to the class in last class we discussed about the different types of protection used for transmission line and faders so in this uh, we discussed a uh, uh, few points about protection of transmission lines so in this in an electrical power system the transmission lines and faders are important element which needs to be uh, protected against the various faults that occurs on them the schemes employed for protection of transformers alternators and bus bars can also used for protection of transmission lines and feeders with slight modification the modifications are required to cope with the protection problems arising out of greater length of lines further further differential protection can be used but the becomes too expensive for larger lines due to greater length of pilot wires required however less expensive methods are available which provides effective protection to the transmission lines and feeders so in this in this lines <coughs> <coughs> these are the necessary for the bus bars protection in is needed for few reasons that are in case of fault on a bus bar the fault current and power may be very large and cause serious damage to the system fault on bus bars may affect continuously of a power system and cause discontinuation of power to a large protection of systems the stability of the system is affected by fault in bus zone in case of large power systems protection of bus bar sections is necessary so that faulty sections are isolated therefore the fault spreads over the whole system for the purpose of protection the bus bar zone includes the bus bars the circuit breakers and isolating switches when a fault occurs on a uh, particular section of a bus bar all circuit equipments connected to that section must be tripped out to isolate the section completely so now uh, today's topics are on completion of this lesson you would be able to understand pilot wire protection and mesh price voltage balance system in this pilot wire system in this pilot relaying schemes are used for the protection of transmission line section in these schemes some electrical quantities at the two ends of the transmission lines are compared and hence they require some sort of interconnection channel over which information can be transmitted from one end to the other such an interconnecting channel as called a pilot such an interconnecting channel is called pilot three different types of such channels are in use namely wire pilot carrier current pilot and microwave pilot the two alternative operating principles which are used for most of the practical schemes are circulating current principle and balanced voltage principles 
So here a differential pilot wire protection is based on the principle that under normal conditions the current entering end of line is equal to the current leaving the other end of the line. Both the end of the line are linked with wire known as pallet. Here we can observe in this uh, in this diagram it has the two current transformers and uh, the relay coil between two current transformers. So this line is called pallet wire. So in this when a fault occurs in the line the condition of balance is disturbed and the incoming current is not equal to outgoing current the differential current of incoming and outgoing currents flows through the relay coil the relay operates and gives a signal to the current breakers the system breaker isolates the faulty line in pilot wide protection in pilot wide protection using circulating current differential relay schemes this the schematic arrangement for the circulating current principle two cts are connected in each protection line one at each end under healthy or external fault condition or secondary currents are equal to circulate in pilot wires. Here in this diagram for the circulating current principle the two CTs two current transformers are connected in each protection line one at each end under healthy or external fault conditions the secondary currents are equal and circulate in pilot wires under normal conditions and in case of external faults differential current of two cts current transformers is zero and relay does not operate during internal faults this balance is disturbed and differential current flows through the relay operating coil. Under normal conditions and in case of external faults, differential current of two current transformers is zero and the relay does not operate. During internal faults, this balance is disturbed and differential current flows through the relay operating coil so here in this diagram we can observe the two current transformers and feeders this line is the pilot wire that will be connected to both current transfer current transformers and it has the hmb4 and check relays to and isolation transformers to substation number one and substation Two. this will be connection between two substations when a fault occurs on a feeder AC current flows in the pilot due to the imbalance of the currents at each end and the corresponding difference in pilot voltage um, produces by each relay so this is the diagram for pilot wire protection the pilot wire protection will be connected in between two current transformers so uh, next is the merge price voltage balance system so in this in this the merge price voltage balance system is applied to a three phase line each end of the feeder is provided with a set of current transformers CT1 and CT2. The secondaries of these CTs are connected in series by means of pellet wire. When 
the feeder is healthy the core fluxes of ct1 and ct2 must be equal so as to cause equal voltages to be induced in the secondary windings the secondaries are connected in opposition so that no circulating current flows in the relay coils if a fault f occurs on phase r it will result into more current in ct than in ct2 the balance in the secondary voltage is disturbed the circulating current flows through the relay coil the relay coil closes the trip circuit contacts which gives a signal to the circuit breaker the circuit breaker will open the fault section in this this is the diagram for mers price voltage balance system so in this it has the one circuit breaker three phase or y and b and it has the uh, three ct1 current transformers one and three ct2 so it will be connected with pilot wire and it has the two relays and the relays will be connected to trip circuit <coughs> and the diagram shows the schematic diagram of the balanced voltage principle identical uh, current transformers are connected in each protected line one at each end the pair of cts in each line is connected in series with a relay in such a way that under normal conditions their secondary voltages are equal and in opposition that is they balance each other in this scheme current does not normally circulate through pilot wires under normal conditions and in case of external faults current en entering the line at one end is equal to that leaving it at the other end therefore induced voltages in the secondaries of current transformers are equal and opposite hence no current flows through the relays in case of internal faults secondary voltages of cts become unequal and circulating current will flows through the pilot wires and operating coils of the relays in this figure connections of mers price voltage balance schemes for all the three phases of the line so here uh, it has the few advantages this system can be used for ring mains as well as parallel feeders and this system provides instantaneous protection for ground faults and also it has few disadvantages of disadvantage of mid price voltage balance system the system does not provide backup protection the external fault currents may disturb the balance in the secondary resulting into false operation of the relay accurate matching of cts is very essential if they if there is accurate matching of cts is very essential if there is a break in the pilot wire circuit the system will not operate the system is very expensive owing to the greater length of pilot wires required the system does not provide backup protection or overload protection because of current transformer equally difficulty the system is not used beyond 33 kv mid price system becomes costly with pilot wires if a break in the pilot wires occurs the system will be inactive the system is limited to 33 kv only so this is the about uh, uh, 
match price protection for traders now we will watch the one youtube video regarding pillar to buys category of unit protection so we know that in the unit protection what will be done so if you are taking your transmission line so this is my transmission line so at both the ends the cts will be connected so the quantities of these two ends are compared and accordingly decision will be taken that means whichever is the zone that we want to protect so the cts will be placed on both ends of that particular zone so this is my the zone of protection so this is my protection zone so this much will be protected so here we can either compare the currents in the secondary side or we can compare the voltages so these electrical quantities are compared in both the ends and they are used for making the decisions so such an interconnecting channel that means these two quantities should be compared so they should be connected together that connecting channel is called as the pilot so that's why it is called as pilot protection so now this connecting channel can be either the directly we can use the pilot wires like this the pilot wires can be connected like this so this is for the case of circulating current scheme or if you are calculating them in cross like this then it is called as voltage balance scheme so the problem is if you want to run the pilot wires because we have to run over long distances because the transmission lines are very long so there the disadvantages are because you have to run these cables or the pilot wires along your transmission line which is a costly affair and the second one is this pilot wires will have the effect of the capacitance as well as resistance so that will introduce the problems in the measurements and overloading of your cts that is a second disadvantage that's why we cannot go for this wire scheme for more than 30 kilometers length because of the restrictions that are rising that means the cost is more and the effect of the capacitance and resistance are dominating so above that we have to go for some wireless transmission schemes so how can i go for the wireless transmission scheme one scheme is either we can transmit through the same transmission line using a different frequency compared to your supply frequency so using that also i can transmit or another option is there whatever these two channels are coming those two channels i can transmit using the microwaves so either i can go for microwave transmission or i can go for the carrier current transmission so carrier transmission means the signal will be transmitted through the same transmission line or we can go for the pilot wire scheme so depending on this there are three different categories one is called as a wire pilot where we go for the wire it and second one is carrier current pilot and the third one is the microwave pilot so this wire pilot can be either buried private cables or the private telephone lines can be used and this is limited to up to 30 kilometers length only the reasons and other things we are going to discuss soon so now the carrier current pilot uses the low voltage high frequency signal in the order of 50 kilohertz to 700 kilohertz to transmit information through the same high voltage line between the two ends and generally this is used for the length greater than 30 kilometers and it is also called as the power line carrier because in order to achieve this at the sending end and the receiving end we need some extra devices for transmitting and receiving the signal so that's why the investment will be more so above 30 kilometers when compared to the cost of the wired system so this will be the cheaper that's why above 30 kilometers we go for carrier communication so when the number of the services requiring the pilot channel exceeds the technical or economical capabilities of this carrier current pilot scheme so in that scheme when more channels are required or more information should be transmitted so then we go for the microwave pilot protection so this microwave pilot protection is a radio channel of very high frequency it will be of the order of 450 to 10000 megahertz and high directive antennas are used to decrease the power requirement generally the power requirement for this microwave transmission will be less than 1 watt so in between if no buildings or no opposition is there or no barrier is there in that case we can transmit the signal up to 150 kilometers without any problem but the problem is if in between some hills or buildings are there this microwaves get distorted so in that case we have to install the repeater stations after every 40 to 60 kilometers depending on the how much attenuation is done or how much signal is distorted so based on that it will be done so let us start with the pilot wire protection schemes so for pilot wire protection schemes 
because we are employing the three phase for single phase two wires required and if you are going for three phase at least four wires will be required three for the phases and one wire will be required for the neutral so if you want to transmit or to keep four wires the cost increases drastically so that's why instead of four wires we employ a scheme we are going to discuss now we use two wires are used to carry the information signals from one end of the protected line to the another one and for short lanes to 30 kilometers the wild pilot schemes are less expensive than the carrier current schemes because the terminal equipment are simpler and cheaper because the terminal equipment nothing will be required here because direct cable only will be there so the distance is usually limited due to the attenuation of the signal caused by the distributed capacitance and series resistance rather than the cost these are the major limitations that's why it will be limited between 15 to 30 kilometers only so here only two wires are used so in order to carry the signals of the complete three phase information so for that how we will do we will go for a summing transformer so the second race of the cts will be connected to these things so cts will be connected like this so if you are taking like let us take for example i am taking a three phase line so these are my cts right so there will be a transformer the transformer will be like that the primary will be this thing this is my primary winding so this r phase this will be connected here this will be connected here and this will be connected here less number of terms are connected here and the third one or the neutral point will be connected to this one so depending on your net value of the current so the net flux is produced in the core so that flux will link with the secondary and induce the emf in the secondary side so here you can see that let us take for example the phases i am representing as a b c so the current that is passing through this one will be i a so here the current will be equal to i b here the current will be equal to ic so ia ib ic are entering here so the net sum of these currents will introduce the flux so if you take this channel so through this channel the current that passes will be because ia will come like this and return back from this neutral back you agree with me because through this the current that will pass will be equal to ia plus ib plus ic so ia will pass like this so here ib will pass and here ic will pass so ia plus ib plus ic the entire sum will pass through this channel and this how much current will pass here it depends on the relative current of these things so under balanced condition we know the phasor sum of the three currents will be equal to zero no current will pass through this winding because the resultant value of the current will be equal to zero let us assume ia is positive at any instant ib and ic will be negative so the current that is supplied by this ia some part will return back through this some part will return back through this whenever there is an imbalance in the currents that means if the sum of the currents are not equal to zero or some fault happens so in that case only the net effect will be there that will be transmitted to your secondary of your transformer so this transformer is called as a summing transformer so using this summing transformer we can use only two wires only two wires are sufficient so let us proceed further so first today we are going to discuss about the translay scheme and remaining scheme we will discuss in the next lecture so this translay scheme is used for loop resistance that means pilot wire loop resistance up to 800 ohms so the reason why it is called as a translay protection is because it employs the transformer feature so that's why it is called as a translay protection so the voltage balance or opposition is between the voltages induced in the secondary coils of the relays and not between the secondaries of the line cts that means we use the transformer so the only secondaries of the transformer will be used for measuring the difference or using the voltage differential protection not the primary so your cts are never open circuited the ct currents that pass through your primary winding will be always not affected so that's why the normal cts which are used only can be used for this purpose also if you want to details about this complete thing i have discussed in module number three the topic name is a translay relay there i have discussed this complete concept the advantage disadvantage so how it is protecting all these things in detail here i am discussing briefly because our concern is something else here i want to only briefly tell you the concept then go for the three phase protection so now let us take for example the translay scheme is done like this this is for the case of single phase system there will be a primary winding and because of this primary winding emf will be induced in the secondary winding <coughs> the emf induced in the secondary winding will be connected to the lower magnet 
similar is the case in the receiving and also there will be primary winding and there will be emf induced in the secondary winding this will be connected to the lower magnet so now these two are connected in phase opposition so let us take for example at any particular instant the current is passing like this here so same current is supplied to your load so this can be either normal loading conditions or external faults so secondary side because of this current the emf will be induced so secondary side currents also will be in the same direction this is my current i1 this is my current i2 induced in secondary side you can see here these are connected in opposition manner that means the i1 is going opposite to i2 as the currents are same in both so resultant effect is a resultant current will be equal to zero or we can tell that they are connected in phase opposition manner or voltage balance scheme they are connected in opposition that means under normal operating conditions or external faults the current passing through your lower magnet or your secondary winding is equal to zero as the torque will be induced in this disc due to interaction of this phi 2 and the phi 1 due to interaction of the flux phi 1 and phi 2 because this flux phi 1 depends on what is the current that is carried by your ct so phi 1 is produced but phi 2 is absent now because of open circuit so as it is open circuit so no torque will be produced your disc will not rotate let us assume some internal fault happens let us assume some fault has happened here so whenever the internal fault happens then the current i1 will be greater than i2 so automatically the i1 is dominating so automatically this current will pass like this that means instead of i2 now i1 is dominating so in the first relay the current will be positive that means here the current is positive so torque will be positive on this relay will run in the second relay if it is singly fed system that means i2 is less than i1 so in that case here the torque produced will be because current direction is opposite in this so torque produced is a negative so this relay will not operate so whereas in the case of doubly fed system double fed system means the direction of current will be reversed here so under fault condition the direction of current will become opposite if the current become opposite then in that case the current i1 and i2 will act to each other so in that case the positive torque will be produced by both the relays and both the relays will trip that means both at the sending end and the receiving end will they will trip your circuit this is the basic working principle of the transfer protection so here in the transfer protection generally what happens whichever cables you are using this cables will have the effect of the capacitance so the capacitive currents may circulate even you are under normal operating conditions also and because of that if the torque is more than this torque that is set so that may lead to operation of your circuit so this problem will mainly come for the case of external faults because during the external faults the currents are more in the ct so automatically the emf induced in the secondary is will be more because primary current is more the emf induced in the secondary coil will be proportional to the value of primary current you agree with me so huge value of voltage is there obviously charging currents will be more that may lead to mal operation so in order to avoid that problem what we do we use the shading rings here so this shading ring in the central limb is used to get the required angle between these fluxes so that the capacitive current effect is completely compensated and this there is one more copper band is kept in the left hand side of this left side of the limb so this is used for producing the opposing torque or the biasing biasing effect because bias differential earlier we have already studied that biasing effect is provided by using this shading rings and the amount of the biasing effect that is provided will depend on the primary current or what is the value of the fault current so that's why this will provide the biasing feature also so let us see how this capacitive currents are neglected so what we do let us assume this is my original value of the flux phi that is produced due to primary current so now because of the band because of the shading band the flux that is passing the resultant flux phi 1 that is passing from your primary magnet to your disc that will be lagging behind this flux by some angle i can adjust the angle so let us assume phi 1 is produced there so and because of this flux phi because of the main field flux phi the emf is induced in the secondary winding you agree with me so that will be lagging behind this flux by 90 degrees so because of this secondary winding the current that is emf that is produced the current will circulate in the lower magnet so that lower magnet the current that is circulating and representing by is that produces the flux phi 2 getting this one so similarly this flux phi 1 whatever is there that is passing out are coming and linking with the disc that will induce the emf in the disc that is emf in the disc will be ed and correspondingly the current will pass in that id 
so now this interaction of this id or this interaction of the current passing through the disk and interaction of the current produced by the secondary coil so these two will produce the required value of torque so we can tell there the torque is proportional to phi 1 multiplied by phi 2 because interaction of phi 1 and phi 2 is producing it into sin of beta either we can write in this form or otherwise we can tell in terms of the current it will be id multiplied by is multiplied by cos of the angle between these two currents so why this came these things are already discussed in module number 3 so now i want to adjust my beta value to 90 degrees so that the torque will be maximum so here the beta value is adjusted in such a way so that this beta value will be nearly equal to 90 degrees or alpha will be equal to nearly equal to 0 this is done using the shading ring so up to the shading ring concept is clear to you so now coming to the capacitive current the capacitive current that is passing that capacitive current will lead your respective value of your secondary induced dmf by 90 degrees because of the secondary induced dmf only the capacitive current will pass right because capacitive current depends on the voltage applied across this and it will be leading the respective voltage by 90 degrees so now this capacitive current is leading this es by 90 degrees so because of this capacitive current also one torque will be produced the torque will be due to interaction of this capacitive current with the primary flux you agree with me so now what happens because of this this phi c and phi 1 the angle between them because the torque depends on here because of the capacitive current will be phi c multiplied by phi 1 multiplied by sine of the angle between them sine of the angle between them is very less so automatically that effect will be neglected that means the capacitive current is not going to have any effect so in that way it will be compensated by providing the shading ring. so now coming to the shading ring that is provided on the left hand side so this will provide the restraining torque so or biasing torque so biasing effect will be provided so now proceeding further for the three phase circuit so for the three phase circuit it will be connected like this we go for the summing transformer so primary is connected to the three like this so here the respective currents will pass if you are taking the phases r a b and c so accordingly the i a i b and i c will pass and this will return back so according under external fault conditions or normal fault conditions the same currents are induced in both agree with me so because of that the effect will be same on both these things so automatically no currents will circulate whereas whenever there is some internal fault so whenever there is some internal fault let us assume some phase fault or the ground fault happens in the internal side then automatically the current supplied this ia ib ic they are different than this ia ib ic so automatically the fluxes or the emf induced in secondary are different in that case because of difference in the emf so automatically the circulating currents will pass between them so accordingly your relay will operate depending on whether it is singly fed system or doubly fed system getting this one i am repeating once again under the external fault conditions this summing transformer effect will be same for both these circuits so automatically the secondary induced emfs are same so no circulating currents will pass under that case and the effect of the capacitance is already nullified by using this shading ring that is provided in the central limb and this this is the shading ring that is provided in the side limb this will provide the required restraining force which depends on the amount of the fault current so this will take care for the effect of mismatch in the ct characteristics so now if the fault happens in the internal to this so there is a difference in the ct currents of these two currents so because of that the second induced emfs are disturbed so automatically circulating currents will pass and that will operate your relay so in this way your relay will operate so you have to remember that this method is used for the value of the this loop resistance of up to 800 ohms capacity and above that if you want to use this because of increase in the value of the resistance the circulating currents will decrease drastically so torque will not be sufficient to operate your relay so that's why this is used up to 800 ohms only that is the reason i hope this uh, protection schemes how, how the protection schemes are done using the pilot wire protection is clear to you so now we watch the one youtube lesson about pilot wire system
now in this lesson we have discussed about pilot wire system uses the principle of differential protection merge price voltage balancing system is useful for ring mains as well as for parallel feeders here we have the few quiz questions and <coughs> frequently asked questions thank you